you will be surprised the study was done in French nursing homes. Nursing homes in there means doesn't mean in the Indian concept of nursing home. Nursing home is old age home. And there were ladies 80, 90 years old. They had cholesterol 800, 900 and all. So the study said if you have very high cholesterol, you live long. You know, you must have had so many papers saying fish is very good for health. It's got, you know, what is that called? Um, omega 3, this, that and all. All these are created, you know, fat. Fat was fat. We all knew fat. Now we created caste system in fat. Saturated fat, unsaturated fat, semi-saturated fat, polyunsaturated fat, omega fat, this fat, that fat. All fat is no good or good. Actually, the man who did this study of fat and health, the first man, his name is Ansel Case. Ansel Case was given $110,000 uh, 110, to find out the relationship between fat and heart disease. So Ansel Case went, he went to Australia, he went to Malaysia, he went to India, he went to uh, Japan, he went to USA, studied uh, groups of people. And then put it together in a XY graph, you know, that's what you do, no? One X here, one X here, this fat here and heart attack here, it was not a straight line. Whenever you are given grant money, you are indirectly told you must get positive results. <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm not joking, man. I'm not joking. Am I joking? No, 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 no. What I am talking here, I may make it look a little hilarious, but it's not just the science, 100% science that I'm talking to you. So Ansel Case had real problem. So he sat. This is called doctoring your data. So he sat down. And then, what to do? I must get a straight line. So he sat and maneuvered, 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 maneuvered. Of the 22 countries he studied, he eliminated, very conveniently, 15 countries. <laughs> I mean, it's, nobody knows, no? If you, if you read his paper, you don't know this. But you must go deep into it, you'll get to know. Now what happened? He got a straight line. At the bottom was Tokyo, Japan. At the top was USA and in between Germany, US, US and some four or five countries. Australia was not there because it, is <laughs> it, it was eliminated. So he wrote a paper in 1951 saying that fat is the be all and end all of atherosclerosis and heart disease. 1961, there was a thinking biochemist in London University. He is a very, very interesting fellow. This fellow did a study, same data he took. Instead of fat, he took sugar. So he put sugar in the x-axis, heart attack in the y-axis and straight line. <laughs> and he said, cane sugar is the be-all and end-all of atherosclerosis. 1963, I had a colleague of mine in the London University, we were working together. He was a very good cardiologist. So he was collecting data on number of trousers sold in Europe since the Second World War and heart attack. So he put the thing, straight line again. What does it mean? Since the Second World War, there was affluence in Europe. Europe had more money, so people ate more sugar, people ate more fat, people buy, bought more trousers. And now this is called the, the, what is called parallelism. These two things go up. If you have a lot of money, don't you buy two trousers? Suppose you didn't have money, you'll buy only one trouser. If you still didn't have money, you'll only have a loincloth. So this is, this is the, what happens in society. But then, you call it a cause effect. That's the dangerous thing. Now, omega-3 came, omega-6 came, omega-3 went away. Now, there are enough papers to say eating too much omega-3 is very bad for the heart. So, this is not real science. This is called reductionist science. Where you reduce everything into two bits and have some relationship. I'll tell you now, you all get worried. Oh, my, my tummy is big. Uh, my sugar is slightly on the higher side. There's a thing called cholesterol, I believe. I don't know what that is. It's a white powder, I know. It does, it's a harmless thing. You, you need it. If you don't have cholesterol, you'll die because every cell wall is cholesterol. Did you understand that? And you get billions of cells every day being new formed. To be six months old, you must have plenty of cholesterol. Now, if your doctor goes and you reduce your cholesterol, probably you'll meet your maker a little faster, quicker. That's all what happens. Now, anyway, all this came, all this went. They were all connected. Then we had a study called Mr. Fit study, MRFIT, Multiple Risk Factor Intervention Trial, which started 25 years ago. And when it started in the 80s, President Nixon was the president. So he reluctantly sanctioned $150 million for this study, $150 million, and told them, this enormous amount of money, I want very strong results. 
very strong positive results. Did you get the, all that? No? Okay. It went on. It studied 500,000 Americans, picked up 100,000 Americans and followed them up now for 25 years. In the first five years, they said, oh, yes, reducing cholesterol, reducing sugar, reducing your blood pressure is very good for you. It went on and on and on. At the 25th year, somebody analyzed it to find out that risk factor interventions with the drugs or surgery will reduce the risk factors, but not the risk of premature death. Did you get that? Risk factors will only reduce the risk factors. In short, this is surrogate evidence of something. Like for example, I have a nice slide today. I didn't bring slides because I thought, no, I don't, shouldn't show you slides. I have a nice slide for global warming. Somebody got Nobel Prize for global warming. Nothing has happened. Globe has been warmer than this 100 years ago. Don't worry about that. Now somebody produced a global warming data. I have a surrogate evidence. I have a slide which shows women's underwear since the 18th century. In the 18th century, the underwear was very big. You know, it used to come almost up to the knee. Then it became smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. It's almost invisible now because its globe is <laughs> globe is warming. You know <laughs> what is that called? Surrogate evidence. And the MR fit study showed that at the end of 25 years, intervened people died more than the not intervened people. Did you get that? Whose blood pressure, sugar, everything was tightly controlled with drugs. They were not there, but the others were there still. It's like Yale University kept a record of their gold medalists in athletics. The gold medalists were not there after 50. The silver medalists were still there up to 60. The bronze medalists were running till 70. And the also rans were there 80, 90 and You'll be surprised, a study was done in French nursing homes. Nursing homes in there means, doesn't mean in the Indian concept of nursing home. Nursing home is old age home. And there were ladies 80, 90 years old. They had cholesterol 800, 900 and all. So the study said, if you have very high cholesterol, you live long, which is true actually, which is true. So friends, this is a science that we are talking about. So Peter Medever wrote, science cannot answer questions because science is not holistic. Science is not designed to answer such questions. Science can say, how big is the fish? Why is the fish in the sea? Why is some fish not in the sea? Why are some fishes in the river? Science doesn't answer. Where is God? Science doesn't answer. So he says, science is only designed for a particular purpose. Like for example, railway engine is designed to run on a railway track. Supposing you go and say, I want this railway engine to fly like a plane, it can't do. So a question is science, can science answer God? No, because it can't. It's not designed to answer God. So science, don't think science is the end of everything. Actually, I would recommend you a good book. It's called Against Method. What's the book's name? Against Method. Our professor from Bombay must read this, hmm? because you know he is teaching science. So against method, this is written by a man called Peter Feyerabend. F e y e r b e n d. Otherwise, he'll make a mistake in the spelling. F e y e r b e n d. Feyerabend Paul. He was a professor of science philosophy in the London School of Economics, which is one of the you no know, famous schools. And there, science philosophy is a very big department. It was dominated for about 30 years by a great thinker called Karl Popper. Have you heard of Popper, P-O-P-P-E-R? Karl Popper dominated London School of Economics for 30 years, followed by his student, Feyerabend. And Feyerabend so beautifully writes. He says, the, all the ills of the 21st century world are due to the so-called science's superiority, supremacy over all other rights of human thinking. Today you think anything is scientific. What is scientific? Going to moon is scientific, right? Right? Right. Of course, we didn't go to moon. We went to Mars. That doesn't matter. That's because PQ is, PR is, PQ is not equivalent to Q, QP. 2 into 3 may be 6, but 3 into 2 need not be 6 in real science. But you teach the student 2 into 3 is 6, 3 into 2 also is 6. That's called absolutist mind. We develop a student of an absolutist mind, one track mind like a tunnel vision, like a horse. What we need is a multivistic mind. You have to take all things into consideration. Even that is no good. There are, there are some schools which teach you multivistic school, but not, not enough. The real wisdom is, you must have wisdom. That is, you take absolutist, multivistic and think yourself and then come up with your own solution. That's called wisdom. So friends, 
knowledge is not wisdom knowledge dwells in heads replete with thoughts of other men but wisdom dwells in heads attentive to their own knowledge is so proud i know so much you know i am a phd i am this i am md i am but wisdom says i don't know much wisdom is so humble because it knows no more knowledge and wisdom far from being one have nothing in common at all the wiser you are the humbler you become and that's indian education indian education says vidya dadati vinayaha you become humbler and humbler the humbler you are more educated you are but today education gives you arrogance degree this all the western thoughts we are taking it and fully imbibing it and saying that's the right way to do it no there are other ways to do it also